TNTM The Show presents Talking Nerdy December podcast. A lighter edition where we're just mainly going to talk about the Doctor who made his debut on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> but if you want to watch the previous stuff, you got to go to Max. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Like, it's, it is kind of confusing and it's messy. And that's I was actually going to ask you, like, okay, where, where do I go to get caught up? Because I haven't finished with the 13th Doctor? Yeah, 13th. 13th, no. Jodie Whittaker, right? I love her Doctor. I've uh, So many of her episodes are, like, in my heart. Like uh, Rosa Parks, I love that one. The yeah. Tesla one, that one is also in my lot, heart for forever. There, there's so many good episodes, but just... The overall. The overall stories are just so weak that it just doesn't help. And I, But I love the actor, I love the character, I love the characters... Uh, but yeah, it's, it's like the stories aren't as solid, but what did you think of the doctor who special with the 14th doctor? And there's, there's, there's three of them, right? Yeah, there's three specials. Uh, they were all really good. The first one really had to like tackle the one thing, Donna. Yeah. And they, they did some Really good twists on there on why Donna was able to not die. Right. Remembering the Doctor. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it was really cool to kind of explore her life more. And then, of course, the character you want to see. Of course, you don't get to see yet. The grandfather. Mm-hmm. Because if you watch the previous Doctor Who, besides Donna, that's who Tennant the tenant doctor really has a connection to is the grandfather. Right. And he even asks about him immediately because that's, I would say one of his best buddies. Mm -hmm. Easiest way to put it. But they, they did some really, it's really cool things with this first episode and it, it was fun. And then, um, the way they get, caused the second episode to happen was really fun too yeah that that episode man i love the way that they're able to just write it's almost like horror but not like it's more thriller and like it's more tense than it is like scary but man it's so intense like my kids because it is pg and i checked yeah and the kids were into it they were into it right like especially like you have that creepy you always just like cute at first and then went creepy you know and then the second one there's that like the cute robot you know yeah. that's going all slow and yeah. and but it's also really tense and, and also kind of creepy so and, and then even the third one was like that as well yeah it's good to have Russell T. Davies back. Mm. He He's actually the one who re- wrote, like, the ninth and 10th Doctor. Okay. So he he's the one that personally wrote these ones. He's going to be a showrunner of the newer seasons. Oh, yes. So it, it, it was a really good choice. And then, of course, rumors of the ninth Doctor coming back. See, the 10th... Yeah, the 10th Doctor coming back seemed a little silly. Mm-hmm. But then... It happened. Well, I I I follow their stuff, right? Like yeah. for us, and and so I saw these things. But I was like, in my mind, I was like, how are they gonna make this work? And it made sense. So he is ten. Is ten isn't back as ten. Ten is back as fourteen. Yeah, it, it's it's uh interesting. So there there's different type of. There's different like type of regenerations that have done really weird ones. Mm-hmm. Like the other really weird one to mention is probably the second to the third Doctor. Because the second to the third Doctor was a regeneration that was forced okay. by the Time Lords. And this regeneration here was forced by someone as well. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of... What caused it to be so different, which I think is part of why the uh, regeneration at the end happened the way it did. Okay, Cause because I... it's it's someone was messing around with the regeneration process, 
And uh, that probably took into effect what happened here. Okay, okay. And see, that's why I love talking to you about this stuff. Because honestly, when I saw the episode, the, the third episode, I was like, the bi-unification, right? That's what they call it. Bi-regeneration. And I was like, this is dumb. Like, this, it doesn't make sense to me. It just, to me, it just seems so dumb. Like, when you explain it, I go, that makes more sense. But even having two that exist simultaneously, and it's like, oh, this one's just going to rest, and this one's going to go do their thing that the doctor's always done. I presume you're conducting some sort of weather experiment. That's right. And, like, this one's, like, even has their... Like, to me, it doesn't make sense to also duplicate the TARDIS, because you go, like... Now they can't just be, right? Like, now they can still... So are they both going to exist? And that's that's what I wonder about this new season going forward. Like, is he... Ba- is he are they going to have both? Is it going to go back and forth? Like, I, it's just really I, confusing and intriguing to me. I think they're going to mostly just focus on the new Doctor, uh-huh. the 15th. But if they ever want to do team-ups, makes it really easy to do. <laughs> and... I think they mostly chose Tennant because he's the easiest one out of the previous ones to get back. Okay. Because uh, really, the only ones he can, can really get back is Tennant and Capaldi if you give him a good writing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was kind of sad that he didn't get like he was a he was great, but he had, he too like also didn't have a lot of great he didn't have a lot of great writing. Uh, as well so that was kind of a bummer but i liked him so but yeah uh so i i personally think like even if you don't know doctor who because i haven't watched it in a long time so i felt like just jumping in and obviously for the kids they were interested right my kids are almost two and almost four so and it was really easy for them to get into it my wife's not really into it she was like we don't want to watch this so i you know, waited until she was gone and we watched together. But yeah, they, they enjoyed it. And I've talked to other people and I think this would be a great time to jump on. Yeah. It's a good jumping on point. That was kind of what they were saying was since they're moving to Disney plus, they needed to make it be something that can be jumped on to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It wasn't too heavy. There's not a lot that you need to know. In the past, like, obviously, if you have, you're like, yes, I love seeing Donna again. I love seeing the the grandfather again. That was such a great Or movie. the other surprise appearance in the, in the third episode where they had a previous companion show up as well. Oh, yeah. That, that's really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, she, like, and, and that's the thing is, like, the grandfather in real life, he passed away. And so when they reintroduced him, I think it was... Was that at the end of the second episode, right? Yeah. He, like, you could tell that was genuine emotion, like, he of him seeing the Doctor. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, of seeing uh, David Tennant, you know? Yeah. Because then, like, after that, like, when even when they do the final episode, they just mention him, and I think he'd already passed away at that point. Yeah. And that's why I didn't actually have him in that last shot. Um and stuff and but that was beautiful too like this is like why you you know to, to think like this is why we do these the things that we do for the peace time right like yeah i you know fight the fights i do the battles so that we can have the peace time and now i get to enjoy but it. even even at the end they still hint well you know sometimes you still gotta <laughs> sneak off yeah kind of make it like a Rick and Morty type of thing mm-hmm. or enjoying the life but then like I would say the pre- earlier seasons where he just kind of sneaks off yeah does his thing and then comes back mm-hmm. so but more uh, subtle yeah yeah for sure but I mean if you're not into Doctor Who I strongly suggest it yes it is campy I don't even know if you can watch the old episodes because when I watched it they had like some that they redid on netflix like the first doctor i think like the first episode at least and then some of the two and then building up i didn't watch a lot like i didn't like the i know a lot of people are all about the troy baker and i think i had it on like in the background oh, tom baker tom baker yeah um, uh troy he's baker all right else. <laughs> but, but um 
But um, my first one was Eccleston, and then once I got caught up, I went back, and and then I think I was up to like Matt Smith. I think Matt yeah. Smith's great. I love well, his. Netflix didn't actually include all the episodes either. Yeah, like I think HBO. I think Max has like most of them. Most of them. Okay. The one that did the best, unfortunately, was before Max, and they had it on Prime. Okay. They had like a way better collection. But Max still has a really good collection. I think the best classic run is probably John Pertwee. Yeah. From start to finish, it's great. And uh, that was actually who introduced the master as well. Oh, okay. Was John Pertwee. Because the idea was, well, what if uh, what if Doctor Who's like Sherlock Holmes? Then he needs a Moriarty, mm-hmm. and that was their answer to like do a Moriarty was the master, right? And we and then with the third Doctor, yeah, he's a hero and everything, but he's an asshole. <laughs> he really is a genuine asshole, not very approachable or likable. Mm-hmm. So they're like, what if we do the master as evil, but he's very likable and approachable. Where if you talk to the two, you'd probably think the master was the good guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was kind of how they had it play out. Yeah, I, I liked him because he was kind of like the James Bond of all of them. He, he had a... Uh, jet ski chase with the master mm. like in just the way he acts and the way he does things you know so great but well, yeah all of them are great the yep. actor is actually the reason why doctor who is still around mm. like he didn't do the revival or anything but basically after the series ended he kept getting letters of people wanting more doctor who and he used his uh, connections to start like the audiobooks. Oh, okay. Like he, the big finished audiobooks were all originated from him, and he really like got he kept getting more and more people involved, and that just kind of kept it going. And then eventually they tried the TV movie that we don't talk about. Planet Earth, 1999. He's back, and it's about time. Who are you? I am the Doctor. Russell T. Davies did the did the, the Eccleston. Yeah, and it took off. Yeah, yeah, that was my first one. He's my favorite one. But yeah, I, I, they, and that's what I, well, I was talking about it with me and this other guy from work. We're telling this other guy about Doctor Who. And we're like, it's campy. Like the visuals are kind of cheesy, at least until they get to Matt Smith. But each, like each, they can continue it because he regenerates. They can use a different actor and they're slightly different. They have some personality traits of the previous, and, but they kind of have like a new thing going on. And so it's it's just great how they build on this legacy. It's really cool how they do it. So that's how like we... we yeah talked about it but yeah and i strongly suggest doctor who to anyone really especially into sci-fi you love time travel you love history you love you know alien stuff like it's all over the place and i love that yeah and if you if you watch the older ones you like sarah jane smith she has her own series too that went on and uh, it only got canceled for one unfortunate reason the actress who played her died but they had no intention on actually canceling the show anytime soon Mm -hmm. like they even had her team up with matt smith oh yeah yeah i remember that that was awesome so what would you what do you give this series the the special i I give it a must watch and remember for sure doctor will be back on christmas yes we still have the christmas special so uh yeah and that's what we always look forward to christmas specials I, i'm not sure about this new doctor we'll see i'm, I'm willing to check it out i'm looking I forward like him to so it so far so he's, he's different for sure <laughs> he, he he seems fun yeah definitely yeah. but yeah so we'll uh we'll check it out we are rocking our merch like the finest merchandise this time ever shown on sale today come on down <laughs> Look at this. Yes. <laughs> Combination hookah and coffee maker. Also makes chili and fries. Will not break. Will not... 
It broke. Oh, look at this. I have never seen one of these intact before. This is the famous Dead Sea Tupperware. Listen. <clears throat> ah, still good. This is individually made. So you can get something made like this. Not exactly because Slay J actually made this for me, which was really sweet. We need to get one made for the ambassador. I've been wanting to make one for the ambassador that has like the Nintendo style logo uh, with it. And we need to get all of his thing. I mean, he's rocking the TMNT, you know, with the original colors right now. That's, that's our design. Uh, but you can get stuff just like this. And same thing, like the similar with the shorts. Like these are basketball sports shorts. Like you can get the same stuff on our website. Check it out at tntmtheshow.com. Right now for our merch of the month, we have Doctor Who, Indiana Jones. Probably going to throw in some Pokemon. And that stuff, the actual stuff that says Talk to Me, that stuff $17.99. Free shipping as well since it's merch of the month. And then... Um, and Doctor Who stuff. And I'm at, we're adding stuff throughout the month. So keep on checking out the website for new stuff all month long. And then we'll probably do one more podcast where we just round off what we... Uh, our favorite stuff of the year. Favorite yeah. game, favorite movie, favorite show. And Ma yeah. Maybe not have Spider-Man 2 get like uh, denied everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see. So, uh, but yeah, I think that's I think that's it for us, right? Yeah. Talk nerdy to me. Stay nerdy, planet Earth.